Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sewn. Today we got a big one for you, and that is to graph rational expressions. So let's get into it. We got this problem right here, where you first would probably want to establish the vertical asymptote, which would be when you set the bottom of the fraction equal to zero. So if you set x minus 2 equal to zero, your vertical asymptote in this case would be regular 2. So I'm going to draw a dotted line here at x equals 2 vertically. And then from here, we would want to figure out what the horizontal asymptote is. Now, the horizontal asymptote is based off of the exponent. So if it is a smaller exponent, which it is this time over a bigger exponent, we have x to the first on the bottom. We have no x's on the top. That will guarantee the horizontal asymptote is 0. So we... Draw that dotted line there, horizontally. The next thing that I would recommend doing is plug in any number for x that you want. However, I would make sure that it's kind of close to the vertical asymptote. But another good number is always just plug in 0 if you can, if you can. And if we do that, plug in one value, we would have 4 over, I'm plugging in 0, 0 minus 2, which ends up being 4 over negative 2, which is better known as negative 2. 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. So we plugged in the point 0, and it spit out the value negative 2. So that means that there is a dot here at 0, comma, negative 2. And that, when you only have a single vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote, pretty much guarantees that this graph is going to look something like this, where you have it hugging the asymptotes on the left bottom right corner and hugging the asymptotes on the top right corner, okay? Not much is going to change from that, but there are a lot of other tiny variances that we have to go over. The next variance is this problem where it's almost the same thing, but you notice there's a negative in front, and that might change a few things, but not as much as you would think. So our vertical asymptote would be negative 2 because x plus 2, you would change the sign. You would get negative 2, drawing it on the negative 2. And then our horizontal asymptote, again, is going to be 0 because we have a smaller exponent over a bigger exponent. If you're wondering where I got all these properties from, I got a whole video on just how to know what the vertical is and what the horizontal is. From here, we can draw the horizontal at 0, and we plug in that one point. So if we plug in one point, again, I'm going to plug in the number 0, because why not? It's the y-intercept that tends to be an important point. So if I plug in 0 for 0 plus 2, I end up with negative 4 over 2 again, which happens to be negative 2. So when we plugged in 0, we got negative 2 again. That's just pure coincidence, or maybe the fact that I kind of just toggled the first question around a little bit. So from here, we're going to plot that point, but look at this time. Instead of it being in the bottom left-hand corner, like it was up here, it's in the bottom right-hand corner, and it would look more like this. Okay? So the next question we're going to do is going to be very similar to this, but it's going to shift up or down. I think I'm just going to pick the one that shifts up by one because that will affect the problem so ever slightly. So if you had a problem like this, you still start the same way where you get your vertical asymptote by changing the sign on the bottom here. Your horizontal asymptote would have been zero, zero over one, smaller over bigger. But because this guy right here, it shifts the entire graph up by 1, so this horizontal asymptote is going to be increased by 1, leaving me with now a horizontal asymptote, not at 0 anymore, but at 1. Now, this would happen any time you have a number off to the right. So this one got shifted up by 1. This one right here would get shifted down by 3. So instead of it having a horizontal asymptote of 0, it would have a horizontal asymptote of negative 3. It is not guaranteed to be the horizontal asymptote, although most of the time it is. All right, vertical at negative 4. 
plug in one point. I am again going to plug in zero, but it's probably not the best choice this time. Um, the point. If I plug in zero, I would have one over zero plus four plus one. And that would be one fourth plus one, which is 1.25. It doesn't have to be perfect because the main thing you're looking for is are you above or below the horizontal asymptote at zero, 1.25. I would just barely be above it. And that's why you should really try and aim for something that is near the vertical asymptote when you're plugging in a point because other times you're guaranteed to pretty much get a decimal. Hug the asymptotes. Don't go through them and you get the mirror image on the other side, all right? So let's change it up slightly. Again, this time we are going to have a horizontal asymptote that is not going to be zero, okay? So this time uh, we still start with our vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote in this case would be zero because if you were to set three X equal to zero, you get zero. Our horizontal asymptote this time is a little ridiculous, which is why you have to know the rules. You can't rely on your graphing calculator to tell you everything. It is going to be 1 over 3 because we have the same exponent over the same exponent, which means the horizontal asymptote is going to be those leading coefficients, 1 over 3. Okay, so vertical at 0, that would be right here. Horizontal asymptote at one-third, so that's like just barely above zero. If you didn't know any better, you would probably assume it's at zero. We still have to plug in a point. If we plug in one point, I would plug in again uh, the number zero, but I can't. If I plug in zero, it's not going to work. So I got to plug in any other point. I'm going to plug in the number one because one is a pretty easy number to plug in. One minus two. 3 times 1 ends up being negative 1 over 3, which is definitely below the asymptote, which is what you're really looking for. Negative 1 over 3 is right about here. So that is below our horizontal asymptote, so that tells me where I am going to be, in like the top right or the bottom left or something like that. So I got my two lines. And the other thing that it's asking us to do here is identify any holes. We haven't done that yet. That's a completely other video. Sketch the graph, but sometimes you're asked to find the zeros. The zeros, or the x-intercepts more importantly, would be found by setting the top equal to zero. So the top equal to zero is how you find the zeros. So that would mean x minus 2 equals zero, and x would equal 2. So, um, I didn't do a perfect job graphing because apparently we have a zero at two. So it should have crossed that X axis at two. And that is another way that you can confirm how this graph is gonna look. But you can only do that when the horizontal asymptote's not zero. So this is why sometimes a lot of teachers don't teach the zeros because sometimes they it gets confusing. You can only have a zero when your horizontal asymptote isn't on the x-axis. You can only have an x-intercept when your horizontal asymptote isn't the x-intercept. Okay? So we got one more and only one more. This one is going to be right here. It's going to be number eight. So on this one, uh, we got x minus two over negative x plus one. So our vertical asymptote for the first time is going to be when you set the bottom actually equal to zero. It's not going to just be change the sign because if you subtract one, you get negative x equals negative one, which means x equals one is when you actually have the vertical asymptote when we divide negative one by negative one. So we have a vertical at positive one. You couldn't just change the sign. We had to think a little bit. A horizontal asymptote x to the first, x to the first would be 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. I don't like that these are all 1s. Bad last example. Bad Mr. Stone. Oh, I'm doing it at 2. Fix it, fix it. There we go. If I wanted to find the 0 or the x-intercept, I would set the top equal to 0. If I set x minus 2 equal to 0, I'd get 
two, which can serve as our extra point. If I were to plug in two, I would have two minus zero, which is zero divided by anything ends up being zero. So that tells me that this point two is the extra point I needed, and it conveniently is the x-intercept. It's not the only point I could have plugged in, but it's, it's kind of an important one, so I just chose it. And there we have our graph. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this one. We do have another video to go over holes and domain and range and all the other stuff that might happen, the x-intercepts we kind of covered in this one. Holes are a big one and slanted asymptotes are a big one. That's in the next video. I will see y'all then. Bye.